Shalom, and welcome to Light of the Hill Ministry. And today we'll be talking about salvation as a gift. If you want to follow along, I will be posting this on the comment box below. And now, on to the teaching. Romans 6, verse 33. For the wages of sin is death, but the favorable gift of Elohim is everlasting life in Messiah Yahushua, our Master. Have you ever thought about what makes a gift a gift. How people relate to the idea of gifts is often revealing as to whether they understand what a gift really is. There are folks who refuse to receive gifts and many who do not like giving them. And occasionally there's some who find far more joy in giving than receiving. Certainly plenty of folks do like receiving gifts too. It's important to comprehend what the Bible means when it says that Yahweh gives us gifts. First and foremost, salvation through faith in, in Yeshua, our Messiah. Failure to grasp the nature of Yahweh's gifts will quickly transform one to, into Pharisaism or a license to sin. In fact, more than likely, the foundation of either direction would essentially be misunderstanding Yahweh, why he gives gifts, or what he intends when he gives them. Is it possible to distrust his motives in giving? Absolutely. It, even ha it happens all the time, but not without harming our potential for closeness with him. No one who must understand the gifts of Yahweh will evade distancing themselves from Him. Romans 6 speaks primarily towards the issue of how we should live. If we are free from the power of sin, why would we live any longer as though we're still lost in our sin? As it says in verse 2, Let it not be. How shall we who die to sin to live in it. Romans 6 verse 2. But before we move on, I want to say something about sin. We must define it through scripture. And there is a verse that does just that. 1 John 3 4. Whosoever commits sin transgresses also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. We see here that sin is the transgression of the law, or Torah. So, when the New Covenant writings talk about sin, it's talking about transgression of the Torah. When we see the word sin, it would be helpful to place the word transgression of the, of the law, or Torah, and to see if it fits. You might be surprised. If we believe sin, transgression of the law or Torah, to be an affront to Yahweh, on the path of those who remain in their sin, transgression of the law or Torah, to be death and judgment, why would we throw ourselves back into that lifestyle? Once again, if we fail to understand the gift of eternal life, we very well may start to not only entertain conclusions that are not true, but inevitably see these thoughts trickle down into our choices and our character. The first half of Proverbs 23 verse 7 states, For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Romans 6 verse 23 is a comparison by contrast verse intended to show us a life devoid of faith in Yahushua, or a life submitted to Yahweh by faith in Messiah. Paulus reiterates in various ways the challenges to not let our thinking be tainted by temporal desires in a world filled with fleshly ambitions and activities. The wages of sin, transgression of the law or Torah, is death. This is not referring to simply the death of the body, but rather eternal separation from Yahweh. The just 
payment for transgression of the law without a Savior is eternal separation from Yahweh under the outpouring of His wrath. The gift of Yahweh is eternal life through His Son, Yahushua, our Messiah. By nature of comparison, this is in part how we can tell that death is referring to eternal separation rather than the act of dying or being physically dead. The word for gift is charisma. Strong's G 5486 meaning a favor with which one receives without any merit of his own. The gift of divine favor, the gift of faith, knowledge, holiness, virtue. The gift of eternal light is something that Yahweh gives freely by His choice. And when He gives it, it is out of His love that He does so. It is up to us whether we, re we choose to accept it or not. Anything else leads one on either two roads of false conclusion. One on the road, one road is the road to Pharisaism and the other road is a life of sin, transgression of the law, or Torah. It is on these very issues where there is confusion within the body of Messiah. And we know that confusion is not of Yahweh. For Elohim is not an Elohim of confusion, but of peace. As in all the assemblies of the set-apart ones, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 33, if a gift is given with merit attached, is it really a gift or is it a wage? Biblically speaking, it is a wage and not a gift when someone must do something or be something in order to receive something. That may strike us funny because as believers in Messiah, we might say something to the effect of, but I have to believe in order to receive eternal life. And this is true, nevertheless, believing itself is not a meritorious activity. And still many, many people have subtly subscribed to this, to, to just this sort of thinking. It is the work of Messiah on the tree that has, that was the saving act. And believing on that act is the necessary response for a relationship with Yahweh and an eternal light in the kingdom to come. Still, Yahweh is granting life freely on the basis of faith, not because his hands are tied but by what we do. Yahweh always honors his words to us when we believe. Hebrews 6 verses 17 and 18 and this way, Elohim, resolving to show even more clearly to the heirs of promise the unchangeableness of his purpose, confirmed it by an oath, so that by two unchangeable matters in which it is impossible for Elohim to lie, we might have strong encouragement. We who have fled for refuge to lay hold of the expectations set before us, Yahweh is fully committed to honoring his word and holds himself accountable to the promises that he makes. And we should be glad for that. His offer of salvation is tied to his promises. And he is not a mighty one who lies. It is not in his nature to do so. And therefore, what he says is true and trustworthy. And as good as done. What would our lives look like if we were fully convinced of the things the Bible said were true of us? It would be a life that is transformed into the image of His Son, Yahushua, our Messiah. We must be careful that our faith is in Yahushua's atonement on the 
tree for sin, transgression of the law or Torah, as well as in trusting Yahweh to keep his word, or else we will lose our way and rely on our own selves for salvation and not the one who gave us the gift of it. Salvation transforms us into the children of the Most High. It is offered freely, and it comes with no strings attached. When salvation truly takes root in our heart, the gift begins to flourish like a seed planted on good soil or ground. And we will show it in our outer layer through obedience to His Word or Torah. By contrast, a salvation without effect or fruit is a life without His Spirit. This person will think they can do whatever he, whatever he pleases them rather than what pleases Yahweh. We must, we must remember that it is the Spirit who guides us into His truth. John 16, verse 13. But when He comes, the Spirit of truth shall guide you into all the truth. For He shall not speak for Himself, but who... Whatever he hears, he shall speak, and he shall announce to you what is to come. The Spirit will guide us into the Father's destruction, away from sin, transgression of the law, or Torah. But without the gift of salvation, the gift of Yahweh's Spirit is not possible, and we are lost without him. May we all thank Yahweh for that gift of eternal life and salvation grant it to us, and may we not take it, the, that gift for granted, and allow His Spirit to guide us into His truth, His Torah. Hallelujah. If you like this teaching, please comment and subscribe, and click the notification button to be notified of the next teaching. Yahweh bless, and shalom to your homes.